Who is right, Lao Tzu or Confucius? This has been the ultimate sage showdown for 2,500 years since they existed. Well, since Confucius existed, it's not really sure if Lao Tzu was a real man or not. But nevertheless, there is the philosophy of Lao Tzu. So who is ultimately right? Is it this Confucian perspective or is it this Taoist perspective? To get an understanding of this, we need to look into an imaginary dialogue created by Zhuangzi, one of the great Taoist sages of the Warring States period of China. This classical period of China when all of these sages lived. In the imaginary dialogue, Zhuangzi skillfully articulates both Lao Tzu and Zhuangzi's perspective of the world. The dialogue states, Tell me, said Lao Tzu, in what consists charity and duty to one's neighbor? They consist, answered Confucius, in a capacity for rejoicing in all things, in universal love, without the element of self. These are the characteristics of charity and duty to one's neighbor. What stuff? cried Lao Tzu. Does not universal love contradict itself? Is not your elimination of self a positive manifestation of self? Sir, if you could cause the empire not to lose its source of nourishment, there is the universe, its regularity is unceasing. There are the sun and the moon, their brightness is unceasing. There are the stars, their groupings never change. There are the birds and beasts, they flock together without varying. There are the trees and shrubs. They grow upwards without exception. Be like these, follow Tao, and you will be perfect. Why then these vain struggles after charity and duty to one's neighbor? As though beating a drum in search of a fugitive. Alas, sir, you have brought much confusion into the mind of man. So there are many things that we could take from this dialogue. But the main point of this argument is whether the Tao, the way of the universe, or the way of nature is something that we induce or it's something that we just have to allow to happen. Now this mentality infects a lot of things. It infects self-cultivation, it affects how we should rule the world, how we should govern the world, it affects our relationships, there are many things it affects. So this is why from both perspectives there are two ways of thinking about Confucius's philosophy and Lao Tzu's philosophy. Confucianism and Confucius is thought of as the carving and polishing mentality. Carving and polishing. So this means that we seek to induce the Tao. It means that we're constantly carving and polishing our personality, so to speak. You know, and this is the idea of the Junza in China. The Junza is the superior man. You could you could sort of think of this as the English gentleman. So if you've ever seen Confucian rites and also Confucian ethics within a home, it's very proper, very stiff. Everyone sits upright. It's not, you could say, relaxed. There is a very strict etiquette to how a Confucian behaves in the home with each other. I'm talking about real Confucian here. I'm not talking about some people in China these days who, who still claim that they are Confucian, but you know they they act more Taoist. So from Confucius's perspective, he would set up a society, he would set up the world and guide a ruler according to this kind of carving and polishing mentality, where he believes that if we act in a certain way, if we have morality and ethics and so forth and so on, then this is what evokes the Tao. This is what brings us back in alignment with the Tao. And you can see his point a little bit here because with some discipline in our life, if, you know, if we become disciplined in exercise and or if we do practice some form of spiritual cultivation, we do see that with discipline, this can help us in some way to reach higher states of consciousness. So that it's not that it's not untrue what Confucius is saying. It's just that it's out of sync with how the universe actually is. So Confucius is always looking at the world from this carving and polishing mentality of how we can sort of build on the world, how we can cultivate ourselves. In this carving and polishing mentality of Confucius, there is somewhat a lack of trust 
in the way of the world, in the way of the universe. And this results from his perspective, starting from this carving and polishing mentality. Because the reason that he starts from this carving and polishing mentality is that Confucius believes that human beings are still beasts from birth. We are beasts and we need to be sort of uh, cultured and nurtured and we need to be guided in a certain way to become a Junza. He believes that we are not sort of inherently good. He believes that we need to cultivate this sense of humanness to evoke the Tao in our life. We need to become a superior person as opposed to just believing that we are innately good and human from the beginning. So he has this perspective of we are a beast. And so everything that he created after that was according to that. And you can see, again, as I said, you can see his point. Sometimes we do have things about ourselves that we want to change. You know, we might act in a certain way or we might have a certain behavior that is not beneficial for ourselves or other people. And so we want to change that. So we need some sort of discipline to do that. And this is where this Confucian discipline of self-cultivation can work. But there are a lot of problems with this perspective. And this is what Lao Tzu continually points out. Now to understand Lao Tzu's perspective, he doesn't come from the carving and polishing perspective. He comes from the unhewn wood or the uncarved block. He says that we should stick to the uncarved block, the raw naturalness of life. And he believes that all of this self-cultivation and this tampering with nature in the world, tampering with governments and, and trying to tell people how to think and who to be is what is wrong. And this, and this is what actually leads us into beast-like mentality. So Lao Tzu believes naturally from birth, we are good. And you know, Mencius also believes this too. Mencius believes that we are innately good. He's one of another great sage of the Warring States period of China. And Mencius was commonly thought of as a Confucian, but a lot of his philosophy is very Taoist. So both Mencius and Lao Tzu come from this perspective of that we are innately good. There's nothing to change. Everything's all good. Lao Tzu believes that when we begin to carve and polish the uncarved block, this is when trouble begins. When we begin to interfere with the way of nature, then we lose the Tao. So we need to stop all of this self-cultivation and trying to become a Junza and interfering with society and stop trying to tell people how to think and who they should believe in and so forth and so on. So that would say that we shouldn't carve and polish the uncarved block because all of this self-cultivation leads one to fall out of harmony with nature and the Tao. When we leave things alone to be as they are, Everything is perfect. The sun and the moon, they continue to be bright. The groupings of the stars, they never change. There is a lot of this beauty in life when we just leave life to be as it will. And Lao Tzu then believes that when we continually interfere with the world, then we are actually destroying the world. And he is right. He is right in this perspective. And this is difficult for people to understand because people don't want to admit that their own personal beliefs and agendas and opinions can actually interfere with the world. This is why Lao Tzu, in some sense, would recommend that, you know, maybe we should leave society and go back to the wilderness and just live in harmony with nature, literally in the physical world. And he believes that this would have a good effect on all of us, and it would. Is that for everybody? That's debatable. But he does have a point that we should, in some sense, do that because maybe then we will realize that in not interfering with the world, the world just continues to go and just move along. And it's always when we continue to interfere, that's when problems begin. Now the argument here would be, yeah, but there's a lot of problems in the world, Jason. How are they going to be changed and what should we do about all of this? So first we need to ask what got us in trouble in the first place? What mentality? And it was the carving and polishing mentality that got us in trouble in the first place. Because we're all walking around with our own sense of morality and ethics, and we're imposing that upon everyone else. And we see this all around the world 
today. When we see other countries imposing their own mentality on other nations and their own belief systems on other nations. And we also see this through Western education, where we see Western education going all around the world and conflicting with many nations because a lot of nations come from a different perspective. We see this primarily in India, where we see a conflict with Western education and the Bharat culture of India. So this mentality of constantly interfering with life and interfering with yourself to achieve some sort of sense of harmony is actually counterintuitive because we're going the wrong way about it. And this is what Lao Tzu was talking about. Lao Tzu was saying, stop, stop all of this self-cultivation, stop all of this interfering with government, stop, stop all of this interfering with people and just allow the world to be as it is. And naturally it will evolve to be whatever is meant to be. And the problem here is that we've never really chosen that mentality. And so we never know if it really works or not because we always come from that sort of carving and polishing perspective. We don't stick to the uncarved block. Now, according to a lot of certain philosophies around the world and also Peter Kropotkin's evolutionary theory, if we allow the world to be as it will, then the world will naturally grow and the world will begin to be in harmony. This is the Taoist perspective. And you see this within nature. You see that when you leave nature be as it will, everything is in harmony. The big problem with human beings is this ability to cut the world up into this and that, what Zhuangzi would call Qing, which is actually a human flaw. It's a human flaw. He believes that that ability to cut up the world in this and that according to our own beliefs is a human flaw because that separates us from everything else. It separates the individual from everything else or say a group or a culture from everything else. And then the world suffers because of this. This is a big problem. We don't see anything else in nature doing this. You just see nature acting in harmony with itself. And we are out of sync with harmony because we, as Zhuangzi said, we have fallen into this human flaw where we cut the world up into this and that according to our own beliefs and opinions of how the world should be, our own agendas. Lao Tzu's philosophy is the end of agendas, the end of beliefs, the end of opinions. It's about seeing the world for what it is and also understanding that you are completely fine in the way that you are, but the problem is, is that you and me and everyone watching is that we've all in some way been touched by society and culture and education. And this has kind of warped our nature, which is what Lao Tzu would say. This has all warped our nature. Even though we think that, oh, we're highly educated, we're highly cultured and so forth and so on. He would say that this carving and polishing mentality that we've applied to ourselves has ruined a masterpiece. It was naturally a masterpiece. You were naturally a masterpiece. But society and the belief of our parents and, and the culture that we're brought up in has ruined who we truly are. This is a radical view. This is a radical view that, that Lao Tzu has, but it's a natural view. It's a naturalistic view that we can't avoid. A lot of, a lot of us can't avoid. This is why Taoism is so appealing and in some sense Confucianism is not, especially when we go beyond the borders of China. A lot more people beyond the borders of China are interested in Taoism as opposed to Confucianism because a lot of us are just fed up with all of this carving and polishing mentality and we are starting to realize that all of this interference with the world is destroying the world. So in conclusion, this ultimate sage showdown, Lao Tzu wins hands down. There's no doubt about it. Now, this doesn't mean that Confucius's philosophy is completely meaningless. It does have meaning. You need to remember a lot of these philosophies, they all mean something to us at different parts in our lives. So, for example, the carving and polishing mentality may be useful to you for a specific purpose. For example, if you are trying to learn the violin sitting back and sipping a tea like Lao Tzu, you're never going to learn the violin. You need to sort of grind away and have this sort of carving and polishing mentality. But what you need to understand is that is not going to bring about any sort of harmony with the Tao. But something as you could say small as learning the violin is not going to have much of a 
greater impact on the world. When we're talking about interfering with the world, we're talking about interfering with the way people think, interfering with our own natural growth, interfering with society in general, interfering, just interfering with people in general. This is what we're talking about. So the carving polishing mentality, as I said, using the violin analogy, it can be applied to things like that that aren't going to really affect society or affect your general perspective of your relationship to the world. But when you're using Confucius's carving and polishing mentality to perceive the world and to cultivate yourself into a junza, a superior person, then this is where the problems begin. Because as Lao Tzu explained, we are naturally good. There's nothing that needs to change. The Tao, it cannot be induced in the world. This was the mistake that Confucius made. He thought that it could be induced. And this is, in some sense, why it wasn't until 71 where Confucius stated that he now knows the way. 71, Lao Tzu was, you know, Lao Tzu would suggest that you should know the way, the Tao, from the day that we step into this world. But the problem is, is that the world steps upon us. And then we are cultivated in a certain way where we lose connection with the Tao. This is the problem. And if we stick to the uncarved block, as Lao Tzu would suggest, then the Tao will enter our life and we will bring harmony in the world. I hope you enjoyed this episode today. There's a lot to go into when we talk about Lao Tzu and Confucius. But if you enjoyed this episode, make sure you like, turn on that little bell notification. Definitely make sure you're subscribed. And if you resonate with this content, be sure to support my channel and visit my Patreon page. And yeah, just think about, think about the way that you are looking at the world. Are you looking at it from a carving and polishing mentality or are you sticking to the uncarved block of Lao Tzu? And if you're not, just give that a shot and see how you feel when you begin to let go of trying to be someone that you're not and coming back into resonance with who you truly are. Shanti, shanti, shanti.